Welcome back everyone for another deep dive. And this one is, uh, well, it's pretty wild. Let me tell you, we're going to be looking at the case of Chanel Maya Banks. Oh, wow. Yeah. You know, uh, Chanel Maya Banks from Gossip Girl. Yeah. Okay. I know the name. So you remember a few weeks back all over social media, those missing person alerts? Mm -hmm. <sighs> well, it turned out to be a lot more complicated than just, you know, a simple found safe ending. Oh, really? Yeah. And so we've got like disputed identities, families throwing around accusations, and just a lot of questions in general. Wow. Okay, so this is less of a case closed and more of a case oh, yeah. wide open. This is going to be a real deep dive into where, like, the truth and what people think is the truth get really blurry. I'm intrigued. Let's, yeah. uh, let's get into it then. So, okay, first things first, the timeline of what happened is super important. Right. So Banks' family, they reported her missing on October 30th, which was after not hearing from her for like a whole week. Okay. And her cousin, Danielle Tori Singh, she was saying that this was really unusual for Banks, you know, like she never just disappeared like that. Ow. Yeah, that makes sense that the family would be concerned then. Oh, totally. Yeah. So then picture this, right? Everyone's worried sick, and then boom, the police, they find Banks in Bourne, Texas. Okay, so she's safe? Seemingly, yeah. You'd think that's the end of it, right? Case closed, everyone's relieved. Right. Usually how these things go. Exactly. Yeah. But that's where this whole thing takes a crazy turn. Instead of, like, celebrating her return the family, they double down. Double down? What do you mean? They're saying that the woman the police found isn't actually Banks. Like, they're saying it's not her. Wait, seriously, they think it's like a mistaken identity. That's exactly what they're saying. They're pointing to things like how she looks in the police footage, her voice, even like her mannerisms. They're saying it's just not her. Wow, okay. That's, I mean, that's gotta be so frustrating for everyone involved. Yeah, it it makes you think about how reliable eyewitness accounts even are. Right, like imagine you're under all this stress your loved one is missing, mm -hmm. and then you have to try and identify them from a distance or on a video. It's gotta be incredibly difficult. Absolutely, there's so much room for error, and perception can be really tricky, especially in a high pressure situation like that. It's like something out of a movie. You know, you think you have this happy ending and then bam, the family rejects the person they were looking for. That's wild. And I bet it just gets crazier from here. Oh, you have no idea. Just wait until you hear what Banks herself has to say about all of this. Okay, I'm all ears. Okay, so we left off with the family saying that the woman the police found isn't actually Chanel My Banks. Right, and you're not gonna believe this. Yeah. But just as this whole thing is blowing up, Banks decides to jump into the story herself. Oh, no way. Really, how? Through Instagram. Instagram, seriously? Yeah, and her posts are like bombshells dropping left and right. So what's she saying? Well, first of all, she's completely denying that she was ever even missing. She's saying she left LA on purpose. To get away from her family. Exactly. She's claiming that they were super toxic and abusive. Wow, so like she was fleeing a bad situation. That's what she's saying. And she doesn't hold back. She uses some pretty strong language. Like she even talks about ritual abuse. Ritual abuse. Yeah. Okay, that's... That's pretty serious stuff. Yeah, it definitely throws the family's motives into question. Like, are they really the bad guys here? Or is this just like a warped perception of reality? It makes you wonder, right? Like, what's really going on here? Is she telling the truth? Or is there something else we're missing? It's like suddenly the whole narrative flips. Yeah. And we're forced to consider the possibility that the family isn't who they seem. Right. And then there's the whole psychological impact of trauma to think about. Like, maybe she really believes this stuff, even if it's not objectively true. And we can't forget the potential for manipulation, too. Like, maybe yeah. she's playing the victim to try and gain sympathy or control the situation. It's a mess. And it really makes you question the very nature of truth itself. Like, what can we actually believe in a situation like this? It's almost impossible to know for sure. And just when you think it can't get any wilder, Banks drops another bombshell. There's more. Oh, yeah. In her posts, she claims that her family was trying to put her under a conservatorship. It's a conservatorship? Wow. That's a whole other can of worms. Right. And you know how the public feels about those, especially after all the high-profile cases in recent years? Yeah, they're definitely seen with a lot more skepticism now. Exactly. So Banks is basically presenting this as, like, her family trying to control her and silence her. So she's painting herself as the victim here, trying to escape from their clutches. It's like a classic damsel in distress story, but playing out on Instagram for the whole world to see. And that adds a whole other layer to it, right? Like the performative aspect of it all. Totally. It's like she's using social media to control the narrative and get people on her side. But it also makes you wonder why go to such lengths? Is this a genuine cry for help? Or is it all just a calculated move? 
I mean, it's hard to say, but one thing's for sure. This whole thing is a lot more complicated than it first appeared. No kidding. Yeah. So what else does she say in these posts? Well, she talks about finding spiritual rebirth with a pastor in Texas. Okay, so she's found like a new community, a new support system. That's what it sounds like. And it kind of makes sense, you know, after feeling trapped and abused, she's looking for a fresh start, a new identity. It's like she's trying to erase her past and create a whole new life for herself. And that desire for change is something we see a lot with people who've experienced trauma. They're just trying to find a way to heal and move on. But what about the family? Where do they fit into all of this? That's the thing, right? They're left to deal with the aftermath of her sudden departure. All these accusations swirling around them and the possibility that she might never really come back. It's gonna be incredibly painful for them, especially if they don't believe any of it. It raises some really tough questions about individual freedom versus responsibility. Like how far can you go in pursuit of your own happiness before it starts to hurt the people you love? It's a delicate balance. And in this case, it seems like things have gone way off balance. So we're basically left with this really weird situation. You've got Banks saying she's finally free and the family's insisting that something's not right. And then you have the police investigation that just feels like they didn't really get to the bottom of it. It's like watching one of those true crime documentaries where you just know there's more to the story, mm -hmm. but you never actually find out what happened. Exactly. And the thing is, in this case, there aren't any clear good guys or bad guys. It's just this jumbled mess of different perspectives and motivations that you can't really untangle. I think this whole situation really highlights just how powerful stories are, especially in the age of social media. Banks has created this really compelling narrative about escaping a toxic family and taking control of her life. She's using Instagram to broadcast her version of the truth, and a lot of people are buying it. Right, but how much of what we see online is actually genuine, and how much of it is just a carefully constructed persona designed to manipulate us? That's the million dollar question, isn't it? It's like we're constantly being bombarded with information, right? but it's so hard to know what's real and what's not. This case is a perfect example of that. It's like trying to solve a puzzle, but you only have half the pieces. You keep getting these little glimpses of information, mm -hmm. but the crucial details, the things that would actually explain everything, they're always just out of reach. And maybe that's the most unsettling part of it all, the ambiguity, the lack of any real closure. It forces us to confront the fact that sometimes there just aren't easy answers. Life isn't always a neat and tidy story with a clear beginning, middle, and end. So thinking about everything we've discussed, what stands out to you as the most puzzling part of this whole situation? Hmm. I think for me it's the family's reaction. They seem so genuinely convinced that the woman the police found isn't actually Chanel Maya Banks. Like they're not just saying it to cause trouble. They really believe it. And that makes you question everything, right? Like what if they're telling the truth? What if there's something we're all missing? It's a real head scratcher. And then you have to think about the different sources of information we have in this case. You've got the official police report, the family's testimony, and Banks' social media posts, and each one is potentially biased or unreliable. This case is a good reminder that truth isn't always objective. It's often shaped by individual perceptions, motivations, and the stories we choose to believe. So where do we go from here? What are we supposed to take away from all of this? I think the biggest takeaway for me is that we need to be more critical of the information we consume, especially online. We can't just blindly accept everything we see and hear at face value. We need to question things, dig deeper, and try to understand the different perspectives involved. Well said. The Chanel Maya Banks case is a deep dive into the complicated world of family secrets, personal reinvention, and the search for truth in the digital age. It's a story that leaves us with more questions than answers and challenges us to think critically about the narratives we encounter in our own lives. Thanks for joining us on this deep dive. We'll be back next time with another intriguing story ripped from the headlines.